recording. This will be available on um, YouTube once we get it ready. Um, so I am excited today to talk to you guys about contract management made simple. We're going to show you how to use SharePoint, Mintex, and DocuSign to kind of simplify the contract management process today. And so um, before we get started, I want to let you know that within GoToWebinar there, there's an area to ask questions. And so if you need to ask any questions, please feel free to click on the little questions box, type in your question. My lovely assistant, Brian, say hello, Brian. Hello, thank you. <laughs> we'll be assisting me. Good morning, today. everybody. And so he will be um, helping me facilitate with any questions or anything like that. And you know, feel free, we've got a pretty intimate crowd today, so feel free to kind of put those questions in there. We'll sort of ask them um, as we go along. And then I'm also going to save 10 to 15 minutes at the end um, for questions as well. So we hope this is really informative for you guys today, and we hope we can target some of the things that you're looking for as well. Um, all right, so let's, let's get into it here. All right, so um, today what we're going to do is we're really going to talk to you about sort of the contract management process. And within that process, one of the things we want to be able to do is just give you a sense for how, um, what are some of the challenges that, you know, we hear a lot of our clients facing and a lot of people facing within the industry. We want to talk to you about why SharePoint can help to alleviate a lot of those problems. One of the things you'll hear me say today is that people use very little of what SharePoint can do, particularly around some of the tools around contract management. So if anything, I hope I open your eyes today just to some of the features and capabilities that are out there around uh, contract management and around um, SharePoint. We're also going to talk to you about um, two tools that work very well with SharePoint, Nintex and DocuSign. Nintex augments the forms and workflow capabilities of what SharePoint can do, and DocuSign is great for e-signatures. And so it can integrate with Nintex, with SharePoint, to capture signatures and then process that, process that along the way. Before we get started, just a quick introduction about Key for Consulting. And so Key for Consulting has been around since 1988. So they have, uh, we have specialized in helping clients with a lot of custom applications, and now we've been focused a lot in the Microsoft space. So we're working very closely in SharePoint, .NET, um, infrastructure type of work as well. Um, we have our world headquarters is in Folsom, California. Um, we've got offices now in San Francisco and locations in St. Louis as well. So um, we've been one of the leading providers of online solutions for the state of California. We've really been integrated with some of the public sector work in the state of California and now the private sector work as well. One of the things that really helps Keeper thrive is our partnerships, and that's why we're talking to you a lot today. So, you know, we have been um, a long-term partner of Microsoft, obviously a gold partner um, within Microsoft, and now um, we parlay that partnership with partnerships with companies like Nintex and DocuSign to really help augment some of the capabilities of what these tools can do. Um, you know, you'll hear me say this a lot if you ever meet me. Like, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel if if Nintex can give you um, really powerful forms and really powerful workflow, let's use those tools. If DocuSign can automate the e-signature, let's use those tools and let's bring solutions together quickly. And that's one of the goals here today is to really kind of walk you through how we can quickly get you um, some solutions, even basic solutions around contract management and around what we're doing. <clears throat> that good looking guy on the screen right there, that would be me. And so one of the things that um, you've seen is that I have been a SharePoint enthusiast way back since 2003. Um, I have been lucky enough to be partnered with Nintex in um, multiple iterations and really enjoy working with the tool and, and what it does for SharePoint. Um, I've been working on building, managing, helping oversee, and now selling um, SharePoint applications since way back in 2003. So I love questions. I love sort of getting engaged with the SharePoint ecosystem. Um, I've been lucky enough to present all across the United States and even in Canada um, on SharePoint. On my favorite tool, OneNote, if you ever hear me speak. <laughs> so please, uh, you know, connect with me on social media. Um, and if you have any questions before, during, or after the session, please let me know. I'm happy to get with you and talk to you about that. All right, let's jump into it today. Um, so one of the things we're talking about today, obviously, is contract management. Um, and then within contract management, I'm just going to stick on this slide for just a little bit to talk about some of the pain points that we've heard people have 
Um, you know, contract management involves a lot of these different steps and phases within here. Um, you know, you come in, you're going to make a contract request. And so how is that request being made? A lot of people say, I pick up the phone, I have to call somebody. I send an email to somebody. How is that information getting tracked? Now, one of the things we'll talk about today is how to start that contract request process, how to make sure that that's being tracked, make sure that there's visibility to within that process. After we request that contract, now we need to generate our documents that are related to it. And it's usually not just one contract. Usually you're going to have a, a set or a group of documents that you need to kind of bring through the process. I mean, for us at Kiefer, you know, I'll have a statement of work. I'll have a master services agreement. I'll have you know, an initial estimate for the things that we need to do. All of those need to be bundled up and then together we need to kind of move those through the process. And we'll talk about how SharePoint can help you do that too. And then as we kind of have the documents, they always need to be reviewed by a group of people. Um, there's very few instances I've seen where one person creates the contract, approves the contract, and sends the contract out, right? And so one of the, the most powerful tools that we have is Microsoft Word. So as we're using Word to do reviews, to be authoring on the document at the same time, um, and then being able to kind of send that out for more feedback from external people, um, Word combined with SharePoint, you know, and then using Mintext to kind of have it flow through the system works very well. We look at combining the documents that we need, making sure that they're grouped together, making sure we have the right version of the document. A lot of times people say, hey, here's my copy of V1. Oh, here's my copy of V4 over here. How do we bring those together? How do we keep those together and make sure we have the right document going to the right place? Um, certain things need to get approved. There's only so much that I can approve or get through the process without having to have my bosses take a look at something. And so what does that approval process look like for you? How do you manage that approval process? What happens when people are not there that need to be there for that approval process? This is where some of the workflow components really help to flush out that process. Um, what happens if somebody's not doing what they need to do? What happens if time has run out on something? How do we escalate those pieces up? Um, that's another piece that we'll look at as well. So um, escalation and then tracking it. Oh, great, you've got that contract. We've got everything set up, but it's going to be renewed in a year. I need to be ahead of the curve on that renewal. I don't want to be there and say, oops, it's going to renew. I want to know two or three months beforehand so I know, hey, can I go talk to my client? Can I go talk to my vendor and say, what's going on, what do, we, what do we need to do to make sure this renewal goes well, can we get a, a new pricing on it? So I think this touches a lot of what some people are looking at, and it was funny, as I was going through this presentation today, I'm like, which one do I like better? I kind of like the two images better. So I kept them both in there. I just thought it was kind of neat visually to be able to see the process and be able to see sort of um, the different ways to kind of imagine the contract management, the contract lifecycle management process. Um, one of the things that we see often are some of these challenges with contract management. And then, you know, we talked about them as we're kind of going through there. Um, one of the things that's very often seen is, is how much time it takes, particularly when it's paper-based, right? And you're moving information from one file folder to another. You have to fax something or send something to somebody. I mean, I can't even believe I'm using the word fax still, but we have clients. We have government clients who still need to fax and get those approvals. Um, in the year 2016. So now how can we get rid of paper? How can we make this process flow much easier while maintaining control, making sure that everything is approved and needs to be where it should? You know, we want to make sure that we have visibility into the process from beginning to end. And so one of the things you'll see is um, how can we give you guys some of that visibility? How can we work with you on that? One of the things I'm going to show you today, I'm going to kind of go into two different demos and examples, but I do want to set some of the foundation around the tools that we're talking about. And I know, um, and I don't want to get too technical today with anything, but I just want to kind of put some of the concepts out there, show you the concepts, and then revisit them and say, okay, hey, even if you come out of today and you say, didn't Malcolm talk about something called document sets? Hey, let me go research that. Is that something that we can use um, within this process? So what I'm going to be talking about today really are the building blocks of how do we automate our contract management process? How can we use some of the tools that we already have today to automate some of these processes? SharePoint is sort of the core, not sort of, SharePoint is the core, the foundation for, for the solution that we're talking about today. Tools like Mintex and DocuSign, Mintex sits on top of SharePoint. And so when we talk about that, you'll see it's a tool 
that lays on top of SharePoint and augments the forms and workflow capabilities that are already built into SharePoint, the .NET infrastructure. DocuSign is going to let us do electronic signatures, and it's connected to Nintex. So Nintex built a connector that says, hey, go send this document to an end user, have them sign it, and then go get that document when it's done being signed. Um, and so we use those two connectors within that process. But then there's built-in processes within SharePoint, document libraries. Within document libraries, we have tools like version control and content approval um, that really go underutilized within some of the things that we're doing. Within a document library, you can build something what's called the document set. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but think of a document set as a folder that contains really important pieces of information. So you have a lease, maybe you have um, a, you know, a, some riders that go along with that lease, and any other information. But we want to make sure that it's categorized and organized the same way as you go through the process. And now within, within each document set, we can say, okay, hey, I, I want to put what's called a content type. That might be a lease. That might be a rider. That might be um, a MSA, services agreement. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And then within there, too, we can say this type of a document set has these types of workflows. So once again, I don't expect you to get it all today. All I'm really hoping to do is sort of kind of give you a little bit of inspiration um, from when you leave this presentation today and say, you know what, I think some of these things really might work well for me. Um, so we're going to give you a real high-level overview of some of these things. And we're going to jump right into a demo, but I just want to talk um, about some of those key components that we, you saw there. You know, within a document library, you have things um, such as version history and version control. We'll take a look at that. Um, one of the things I love about version control that very few of our clients use is this concept of major and minor version. What is that? So that's saying, hey, I want to work on a document when it's in its minor version. Maybe I'm working on a contract and we haven't gotten all the, the verbiage right just yet. And then when it's ready for review, when it's ready for the executive team to see it, then I publish a major version. You know, we help clients, we help people work through that process to understand some of these tools. You have the ability to check in and check out something, say, I don't want anyone else to be working on it while I'm working on it. But now in SharePoint 2013 and 2016 and Office 365, we can have multiple people working on the same document at the same time, right? And tracking their revisions and tracking their changes. And that's something we'll, um, <clears throat> that you can see as well. That, is really powerful. It's something that we use all the time. So within a document library, we talk about this concept of a document set. And so within a document set, you have certain default types of documents. You'll hear me use the term metadata. Think about that the way you might tag a photo in a social media, right? So it's the same thing. So how would you tag a document? Maybe by department, process, due date, um, you know, who it's assigned to, those types of things. We can put all that information around a document and a document set. The nice thing about a document set is that everything within that set has the same metadata, has the same um, information that needs to get tagged. Um, now, within a document set, you can see sort of different content types. And so maybe um, in this example, we have a presentation, a planning template, a messaging matrix. That can all be grouped together into one. No, those content types can all be grouped together in one document set. And so what this shows is that there's a lot of different ways, reasons why we create these templates. So think of a content type almost as a template that you would use. Uh, and then that template has certain metadata, certain information around it. Um, we talked a little bit about version history. What's really nice about that is that that gives you that audit trail that you need. You can see the evolution of it. You can always revert back to it as well. So those are things that are very, very important kind of coming through the process. So let's do this. Let's take a quick look at what that might look like um, in real life. So here what we have is um, an Office 365 environment um, with document sets and document collaborations, right? So this is just a basic, um, not a basic, but it's a nice intranet done in Office 365 for a business to be able to manage some of their uh, documents, collateral, and information. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, their collateral central. And so if I go into um, 
here, we'll take a look at sort of how they have some of their collateral organized. And then, oops, where did I go? Actually, let me go back here real quick. SharePoint sites. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at um, how they have their collateral organized, how things are being used here for them. So we're going to go into what's called the collateral center. And this might be a contract center for you where you have all of your contracts that you're managing and you're working with. Um, and you want to take a look at sort of what's in um, that collateral. You want to see how things are being organized. So here we talk about the concept of a document library. And so within the document library, I have a bunch of different document sets, right? And so if I want to create a new piece of information here, I can go back to those templates that we talked about before, or I can create a brand new document set, right? And if I create a brand new document set, and this could be a contract document set, this could be sort of that group of documents that you're utilizing, and we'll say contract management demo documents. And then we use that same description here. And then we could say maybe this expires. And so this is going to expire on 7-1-2016. This could be your contract expiration date that you are using to track when you need to come back to this and take a look at it. Right, so within here, I see it's going in, it's building those contracts for me. It's utilizing the templates that I already had um, to create that document set for me. And so now I have three brand new documents within my document set that are within my document library. So the first thing I would say to you is what types of documents do you have when you're managing contracts? What types of documents do you want to be together as you're managing those documents and going through the process? Um, and that's when we would start saying, okay, hey, let's bring this lease in, let's bring this information in, let's bring this in. Let's create a document set for each one that has to go out. Let's manage them as that group. And the nice thing about these document sets is that they can all maintain the same properties. And so I can edit those properties as well um, for the entire document set. So if you're just dealing with a document, you're only managing one property. But if I'm dealing with a document set, I'm changing all the properties for the document set throughout. <clears throat> so that's how we go and do that. Now the other piece here is in within SharePoint 2013, Office 365, and now SharePoint 2016, you always see these magical little ellipses. You want to use those to kind of see where your different options are around there. As you move the contract management process into SharePoint, into these tools, you have things like previews and, and you have things like properties that we talked about. We have security. Um, and so I can set security for each of the different documents if I want, or I can set them as a whole um, <clears throat> for the entire piece, right? Um, okay, we'll update. Oops, let's not do that now. <laughs> um, and so all I'm so showing over here are um, the different options that you have when you're uploading that file. So let me close that. So there you see I can open it in PowerPoint, um, download it. We can talk about version history. I can come in and take a look at advanced. Once again, I really like that concept of publishing a major version throughout there as well. So I can go in and I can publish that major version um, if I need to do, to do that. So let's go back up to that document library. One more. And so it, it sort of shows that concept. So, so we're in that document library. And then what I really want to touch on very, very quickly is sort of um, the different options within the library settings. Um, one of the things that we're not going to be able to get into into a lot of detail is things like information management policies, um, the ability to kind of set how long you're going to hold on to the documents for, and that's through a lot of the advanced settings in here. Um, and so I can talk about information management policy settings. We can talk about permissions for the different documents. I can set workflows on each of the different documents. There are so many options for what we can do. And once again, you'll hear me talk about we just are going to be able to kind of get to the, the top of that iceberg, figure out sort of the key things that we're working on here. But this is a really good sort of example of just kind of grouping some documents together, creating that documents and sort of having that process. So let me know if there's any questions on that too. We're going to jump into some of the workflow components in just a second here. So what I want to do here is just quickly kind of walk through a couple more pieces and we're going to switch to another demo as well. So here, um, one of the things that you're going to see is within workflows. And so SharePoint has some 
out of the box workflows that can do uh, that can help in the process, but they can be very limiting. So a lot of times people move from out of the box workflows to SharePoint designer workflows. That's going to give you more flexibility. That's going to give you more capabilities in what you can do, but you're going to need to have more of a developer mindset, and there's still going to be some limitations there as well. You're not going to get some of the visual things that you see in front of you now. And then at the top of that scale, you have .NET. So you can go into Visual Studio and create some very robust workflows that you can utilize, but they're going to be very complex in nature, and you have to have a developer to then manage them. The nice thing about the tool that we're going to be showing you today with Mintex is that you can um, do a lot of things with no code or low code. Um, and we'll show you some of the examples of that um, in just a minute. Um, so one of the things we showed a little bit there is that there are the capabilities for some of the information management policies. And we're not going to have um, too much time today to kind of spend on that. But I do want to talk about just you can do some retention type pieces with there. Um, when you want to delete things, we can start to archive a contract after seven years. And we can automate that entire process from beginning to end as well. So there's a lot of different um, abilities that we have just in information management. Um, some of the other things that we um, talked about a little bit, some of the word co-authoring, some of the security capabilities that you have. And these are just native SharePoint capabilities, right? Um, the ability for the security at the document site or library level. I'm sorry, library or site level. And then there's some very robust search capabilities that we can talk about as well, auditing, reporting, and business intelligence. Those are some of the things that we're not going to get into today, but what I do want to leave time for is um, going into the Nintex pieces, the demos, and talk to you about DocuSign. And so let's jump right into some of the Nintex pieces right now. Very quickly, once again, we talk about Nintex being this platform that sits on top of SharePoint. And what it really does is it's going to augment the processes that we've talked about. It's going to be able to create very good looking forms in SharePoint that give us a little bit more functionality to capture some of the information we want. Today you're going to see us generate a document just by filling in some verbiage um, as part of the contract process that we're going to go through and then using a connector to connect that to DocuSign. Um, and this whole thing can be done utilizing mobile as well. So let's say that there was an executive that needed to go out and kind of say, hey, what's going on? With that contract, they can check on their mobile phone. So we have a lot of different options for how we can get to that information um, using the Nintex workflow platform. So let's go take a look at Nintex. All right. So now what you see in front of you is another demo environment. And so what this is here is a, let's go into a new screen here is an intranet um, that has a lot of the Nintex components on the back end. And today we're going to focus on contract management. Um, but one of the things that we're able to do is sort of demo different options and, and opportunities around financial services, healthcare, and manufacturing. Um, one of the things that we've done a lot is showing the onboarding, offboarding for human resources within finance and accounting, expense reports. Um, IT, uh, you'll see some of the HR approvals, some of the onboarding. Today we're going to talk about contract assembly and review. Um, but then there's also sales and marketing options with Yammer and Office 365. And if you want, you can even connect to Project Server and Microsoft Project. So if you're working on very large projects, lots of projects, the Nintex tool can help you in kind of going between those. But let's jump into contract management. So here we see with legal, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the contract request process. And then you'll see here on my screen, and let me zoom in just a little bit so it's a little bit bigger. You'll see here on my screen we have contract requests. Um, so I want to create a new contract. Some of the templates that I can use. So you saw that part about the document generation. Well, I can come in here, use one of these templates to create a new vendor services contract. And that's what we're going to do today. And then once I'm done, I can convert that to a PDF. So a lot of times in our world, um, when I'm creating a proposal, I'm working with the development team, I'm working with Sean and Greg and Brian, we need to convert that to a PDF at the end of the process. And so we can go through and automate our entire process and then at the end of it, create a PDF. So let's go take a look. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new item. And now within this new item, what I'm doing is I'm bringing up a Nintex form. 
Now, this is a very basic form, so you don't really get to see all the, the kind of the bells and the whistles of what the Nintex forms can do. Um, but imagine that if I was going to create um, a certain contract type, I needed to capture this type of information versus if I'm going to create a different contract type, I would create another group of information. Nintex can show and hide the information that you need so it's just relevant to the user. At the end of the day, we just want to make it simple. We just want to make it simple for the people who are using it. All right, so let's take a look here. So we want to create, let's say, an Acme Vendor Services Agreement. I always love Acme. Ever since watching The Roadrunner, I think every, I thought everything was owned by Acme when I was a little kid. So I'm still that same way, right? Um, other party, let's say, um, Acme 2. And, we, and the status is going to get filled in as we go throughout the process. So I'm going to click Save here. And now what it's doing is it's starting a workflow. It's saying, okay, hey, we want to create a new vendor contract. We want to use um, what we just did there for a request. And so you see my request here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a look at my workflow history. And so it's just about to run. So let's actually go take a look at the workflow itself. So we're coming in to create contracts. And the workflow that you're going to see here, and we'll walk you through this on um, the different parts of it, you'll see sort of what we're going through. <clears throat> One of the most important parts about any workflow project or your process that you're working with is spending the time to document it. Uh, I can't tell you how valuable that is. We, we've been lucky enough to kind of help people. Oh, see, there's my, there's my uh, information right here, and we'll get to this in just a second. So what happens here is I'm setting the contract type, right? And then what Nintex is letting me do, so right now, let me step back a second. Right now, we are in the Nintex workflow environment. And so what you can see here is this is where I can come in. I can create workflows. I can modify my workflows. Um, I have a bunch of different tasks, which we'll walk through in a moment here. So you can see sort of the different options that I can use for my workflow. But here I've come in, and I've set... I'm going to set my contract type. I'm going to create a variable called contract type. I'm going to set it, right? And we're today we're doing the vendor services agreement. So I'm going to come through the vendor service agreement here, and I'm going to come through this process here. I'm going to get extra data. I'm going to create some strings. I'm going to update my document with those strings. I'm going to, oh, look at Cortana. No, thank you, Cortana. <laughs> I'm going to commit those changes coming through. Query list. I'm going to update my item, and then I'm going to come through on the other side over here. And so we'll walk through the other side as well, but let's go in and take a look at the email that I just got. So now what it did is we look here at 10.28 a.m., so we know that's today. It's the presentation that we're working with. What it's doing is it's saying, hey, Malcolm, we need more information about the vendor services agreement that you're creating. Now what's great about this process is I can use what's called lazy approval to update it. But now I'm not just approving something, I'm actually going to add to my scope here. So within there, you see an option for scope of work. Go away. <laughs> you see an option for scope of work. And so I'm going to add in, um, we need to do 1,000 hours of services. And my rate schedule is uh, $1,000 a day. And we're going to say $5,000 per week. And if you notice in there, I'm actually putting the information in the email. So I haven't left Outlook. I haven't left the tools that we're going to use. And all I'm going to do is send that back to my workflow. So I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to click Send Back. And now what it's doing is it's going through. It's going to take my information out of the scope of work. It's going to take my information out of the rate schedule and it's going to put it into a document. So we created that document on the fly, or I'm sorry, from the template, and all we're doing is adding that specific information to it. Now this is great if you have very basic contracts that need small updates in certain parts. We can also do this with larger updates, right? And so if there's certain pieces where you need to put in a whole sort of uh, description of the services you're going to be providing, you can do that as well. Um, there's a lot of different options that we have um, to be able to see that. <clears throat> so now one of the things we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to take a look at that workflow, 
Um, here's the one that we requested. So I'm going to come in through here. And then what I want to do is I want to view my workflow history. One of the things that we talk about a lot is how do I get the visibility into my process? Um, we hear all the time, it's like, well, the contract is stuck over here. This person has, they're supposed to be approving it. Oh, this person's supposed to have it over here and they're supposed to be working with it. And so one of the things that we do is we provide visibility into the process. That's what this really does. It provides visibility into the process. Now you can see we've set the contract type, we've updated the status, and now we're getting the vendor service agreement extra content. So when we went out and we added that information into the document, we've got the extra content that we're going to use to build these two strings up, and then we're going to update that status as we talked about, commit those changes, and then we're going to create a draft of that document, get two people to review it as we come through, update that status, and then we're going to request a decision whether we want to approve it or not. And then once we're done, we're going to create a PDF document for it, update the status, file it into the new vendor contract agreement, and then be done. Um, and now the nice thing about any of these workflows that we talked about is that um, let's take a quick look at how we would modify one of these workflows. And so if one of the things that we can do very simply is just drag and drop information onto the workflow. So one of the things here, you see me just drag and then I drop. And now all I did is I just updated the workflow to have an, a send notification once the contract type is set. Right, so I can come in through here and then I can configure that. Now once again, you know, we're talking about low code to no code type of solutions. And so we have the information for where I want to send it to, where I want to send it from, and then I can create custom subjects and insert references here. Within each of these different fields, I have the ability to come in and insert common fields within my email that I'm sending out, common item properties for that field, any of the workflow constants that I created along the way, a bunch of different functions, and a bunch of different variables. So it sort of takes that mindset where you know, okay, this is a variable, this is a function, I want to create some of those pieces together. But this helps us to really be able to customize the process. And so a lot of times what we do is we'll work with our clients to say, okay, hey, um, we can train some of your people on how to make some of the simple modifications to it. But the other nice piece about this is that we can look up in different lists and information sort of where this information resides. Um, so we can try to simplify that process for you. But it's really nice the ability to kind of come in here and be able to see um, some of those different workflows. We're now we're not going to save here because um, we just want to kind of show where um, we're going to be there. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look at um, what we need to do next. So we're going to need to do an approval next within here. So I'm going to take a look at the um, workflow history. And I'm going to go back into create contract. And what you'll see here is that we've built the string, we've updated the document, we've committed those changes, created a draft, <clears throat> and now we're going to get information from the contract reviewer. The contract reviewer is going to be another person, right? So we have another person here as well. I'm in another environment. We're going to take a look at Brett's email. And then here's Brett at 1034 taking a look at what he needs to do. So it's a little hard to read here, but what it says is please review the following contract. And so then I can come in, I can click on that contract, that link, and then what it's going to show me is it's going to open up that document in Word, and I can review that contract. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, Brett's going to review it quick because he likes what's going on. He thinks things are good. Now you see here, Here's that information that I typed in. There's that $1,000 per day. There's that 1,000 hours of services, right? And so that was what we put in today, and then it filled in and put that contract information within there. Very easy way to go in, automate the process, automate the documents as we're going through. Let's close this out here. Oops. Um, okay, let me bring this back up. All right.
I accidentally closed Brett's window out. Let me bring it back up. There we go. And now let me hit the correct X. There we go. And we're going to close that out. And now what I want to do is I want to approve this. I took a look at it. I want to approve it. Once again, I can use lazy approval or I can click here on the task. Let's use lazy approval because I'm lazy. <laughs> so we're going to click here, click reply. And then all I need to do is type approve above the line and click send. Now what this does, this goes out updates our workflow, says that Brett has approved the document for use, right? And so now the other thing is that the person who created the document also got a copy of it. So I'm playing the role of Eden Stafford here, and I got that same document, right? So now what I wanted to do with a little bit bigger window is just show you some things that I'm sure you already, a lot of people already know within Word and within the tool set. Within Word, one of the things that we can do is just to modify that. Let's go back into print view here. When I need to do a review, I can come in and I can click on the review tab here and I can show my comments, track changes, and put some of those things in here. So this is really key as you're coming through and you want to make modifications. Make sure you're doing it by using the update comments and review comments within there. So I'm going to close out of there. And then Eden's going to approve it as well. So let me close out and close that and then close here, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to approve it for Eden, but this time I'm going to take a different route, right? I'm going to click on the here to respond to my task. So I click on that. What it does then takes me to the site, lets me approve here, and now I'm going to add some comments. Um, I liked everything. Are we sure on the rate? And then what's happening is that all of this is being tracked throughout the process. Um, we have logs and timing for every step along the way. So if you want to say how long did it sit here versus being over here, how long did this kind of sit through, we can track some of those things as we go through. And that's really important to see where the bottlenecks, where the bottlenecks, where are we running into issues as we're working on the funding document. All right, so let's go take a look and see sort of where we are within the process. So we see here, we know now that the contract's ready, right? So we've made it through the process all the way. So let's go take a look at my request. And there's me again. And let's take a look at our workflow history one last time. And we take a look at create contract. And now what we see here is that we've gone all the way through the process, right? So we've created the contract type, we've updated the status like we talked about before, created a draft, queried the information for who we needed to review the contract, sent them an email letting them know, hey, I need you to review this, let me know everything's going, is good, built all the strings that we need, updated the status, we tried to create a PDF. There was an error that happened with the PDF. That's okay. So we sent a failure noticing, hey, um, we weren't able to create the PDF from it, updated the status, changed the state, and now we're done. So one of the nice things about that is we really are able to take that process sort of from beginning to end, see everything along the way as we're kind of working through there. Now the other big piece about this is some of the reporting that we can do within here as well. So now that we've created the process, we've gone all the way through the process, we can take a look at some of the reports. And so within the reports, I can say, okay, what are some of the workflows that I've been using? These are a lot of different sort of dynamic reports that we can generate based upon the workflows, based upon how the workflows are going, um, and then kind of what you've been doing, right? So we see here, we can take a look at completed workflows. And these are all the different workflows, right? So this is one that we just worked on, which was the create contract. And now what's interesting about this is that we can see how long it took to get through each part of the workflow. Um, and this is great to be able to say, okay, how did this workflow go? What happened? Really sort of getting a gauge on particularly the workflows that take time, particularly the workflows that give you a little trouble um, that you're working on. You can see where that bottleneck was, sort of what you're trying to get at um, as you're going through there. <clears throat> and so... 
it's calculating, <laughs> letting me know kind of what's going on there. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to take a look at that. Um, but I know one of the things that we talk about all the time is how can I get the information um, for some of those workflows that I need, for some of the reporting that I need as we go through there. Um, and so the other thing I did want to quickly take a look at is just some of the different options that you have within the workflow. So we'll come back to this <clears throat> once it completes for what it's doing. But then another place you can see reporting here is sort of how long it took here. We can view statistics as another way as well. And we can customize these reports. Yeah, so this will work too. So we can customize these reports. Um, we can sort of flush them out. But here we see sort of where the process took. So we can see sort of the occurrences, the average duration. And here we can see, here's where it's taking most of the time, right? We're getting that vendor services agreement extra content. We see that that's taking most of the time. Now, of course, this is in my little demo world. So, I mean, this won't be two minutes and 37 seconds in the real world. You know, this would be hours or maybe even days as you're going through there. But then you can start to kind of say, where are the processes that are really taking us extra time? What are we waiting on? Why are we waiting on them? Um, what I have seen time and time again, and once you put provide visibility into that, um, it really changes the game. Nobody wants their name up in lights. Nobody wants to be, okay, hey, that's me who is everyone's waiting on. Um, and so this has been a really great process to be able to kind of see, um, see some of those statistics as you're going through there. Okay, so that didn't show, and that's fine, because this is the same report here. So this shows sort of the timing and sort of how we want to look through there. So the last thing I want to show here is I want to make the screen a little bit bigger here, and I want to edit this just to give you a sense for how robust um, the Nintex tool is in sort of helping us create and modify some of those workflows. So here you see the ability to sign tasks and send notifications. Um, we have integration. So there's a lot of, we talk about those connectors. So imagine um, within our contract process at Kiefer, you know, we work with Dynamics. And so a lot of our processes, we're integrating um, utilizing some of the tools here to say, okay, hey, create a CRM record, um, let me know something's closed or let me know something's open. We can integrate with SQL Server um, as well on the back end. L LDAP, web requests work very well with any of the SharePoint list items that you need. So let's say you wanted to create a new document library, you wanted to create a new version within the process once everything's been approved, we can do that within your contract process. And we know that there's a lot of logic and flow elements to every process. Um, if, it's this, if the contract is X amount, it needs to go here. If it's for this, it needs to go here. If it's a critical date, it needs to go here. Um, one of the things that we can do here is we can really drag and drop some of those processes right onto yours to be able to say, okay, hey, here's what we need to do from that. Um, and not that you're gonna be tweeting out any sort of, hey, we just landed a new contract. Um, but if you were, maybe let's say you're using Yammer to do more of an internal messaging around that, you can do that here um, with Yammer and Nintex. And then you have, and then you have some of the operations as well. So building strings that we talked about, regular expressions, creating some of those pieces there. Provisioning, um, this doesn't really matter much for the contract management process, but if you ever needed to add new users, and then there's user interaction as well. So I want to finish up here pretty quickly. Um, so this kind of walks through some of the Nintex pieces, and I'm just going to be able to kind of talk to some of the DocuSign stuff, and then I want to leave um, 10, 15 minutes for um, any questions or comments or anything like that as well. So you see here, um, we've been able to do everything through email. We've been able to get everything sort of um, put together throughout that process. Um, and then last but not least is um, with DocuSign. Now, the nice thing with DocuSign is that we can actually go and capture um, signatures. And this is, uh, this is actually going to be more secure than what you're doing when you're even sending things back and forth. Um, signatures can be captured because DocuSign is that third party. The Nintex element will go out and it will go and request the DocuSign signatures for you and then bring that back into your process. Um, and this can be both internal and external. And an external sender or receiver has to validate all of their information. And because of that third party validation, that's what makes it legal and secure. So what the user has to go through on their end to say, oh yes, I am signing this. Yes, DocuSign is my e-signature provider that will give them the ability to um, kind of work through there. 
Um, so rushed through things pretty quick. Wanted to get kind of into the 45 minutes, 50 minutes. I know um, I really appreciate sort of everybody's time today. And one of the things that we talked about today really is how do we improve that contract cycle time? How do we get users to simplify that process a little bit? Um, and then by doing that, what we're doing is with our renders and our contractors, we're able to really shorten the process up and make the relationships better, right? Because we're turning things around quicker. We're getting information to them. We're able to be proactive rather than being reactive to some of these issues as well. Um, we're taking paper out of the system. Um, you know, everyone's trying to get paper out of the system. And in this day and age, there's no need for it. Um, with e-signatures, with the workflows, with the documents and the templates and email, um, we can get all that information coming through. And now, using tools like OneDrive, um, you can store the information in one place, save it, or with SharePoint as well, same way as work. Um, the whole process is very auditable from beginning to end. From the day we say create that contract to the second that signature is received to the time that we have to renew that contract. A lot of that, a lot of those pieces are, are being tracked all along the way as we're going through. And we're able to kind of put reporting and metadata and tagging around all that information as well. <clears throat> Once again, I mean, we went pretty fast today. And I went through a lot of things very quickly. My idea and my goal and my hope today was just to inspire you, to give you some ideas about how to use tools like SharePoint and Nintex and DocuSign um, to be able to utilize and create any sort of uh, contract management processes, whether they be small or whether they be large. Um, and so we can work with you on that. Um, once again, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Um, please let me know through social media as well. Um, Brian, did we get any questions at all? Is there anything that we need to answer? We do. We have a question. We do have a general question that was uh, presented to us by David um, about the solution itself. Uh, his question is, how long did it take to design the solution, and how many people were involved from a technical side in designing it? Um, so how long it takes really depends upon everyone's process, right? And so generally what will happen in a contract management process, one of the things that you're going to look at is, we need a lot of we need a lot of interaction with the client at the beginning and understanding the process at the beginning. And so you know you're spending a week to two weeks just getting your arms around the process, documenting the process, making sure all the pieces are in place. Uh, now the nice thing is that once some of these pieces are in place, if you have the templates and you have some of and you have the SharePoint environment, you, know, you can get up and running in a month. Let's say you get the ecosystem, you get everything working uh, within the ecosystem. You're creating your document libraries. You're, you're analyzing your metadata. The technical people you need to have in, on board are the people who are going to be able to kind of configure your SharePoint environment, understand sort of the workflow, the tools, and the processes that you're going through. Um, and then <clears throat> once we launch it, the ability to train. Um, one of the things that I don't want to undersell at all is that people need to be trained on the system. People need to understand sort of the flow and the process of the system as well. And so we want to make sure that you have plenty of documentation, um, train the trainer videos, and so even spending a week to two weeks after that to really sort of get that first phase in there. And the other thing that I, I wanted to sell too is that you don't need to do the whole thing from beginning to end out of the gate. One of the things you hear us talk about all the time is how can we take small steps to get to where you need to be. Maybe it's just automating the creation process, you know, and then you're saying, okay, now we want to automate the renewal process. Um, and so sometimes not trying to tackle everything at the beginning is a really safe and sort of secure way to help with that process. So I hope that helps, David. If you have any other questions, too, please let me know. Um, Brian, any last thoughts, feedback on anything? No, no other questions from the group. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out to join us today. Uh, there will be uh, more webinars focused on Nintex and different types of workflows that uh, Nintex addresses in the future. So um, follow us on social media, and um, we will be keeping folks up to date on when the next webinar will be uh, will be held. Yeah, and we'll make sure that the slides and the video is available to everybody, and we'll email everybody out who was on the call today. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it, and I uh, hope you have a great uh, upcoming weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank you.